With the Polar Partnership, we're trying to change climate change from what's been considered a controversial or contentious issue into a personal and community challenge. So we're trying to invoke people's problem-solving skills and get them excited about seeing how they might engage with the topic and what they can do. The poles act as a climate regulator for the Earth, and so the major changes that we see happening there with respect to things like sea ice and glaciers have a global impact. Even though it seems far away, it's actually quite immediate and near. Even if the Arctic is thousands of miles away and it's changing, we will feel it here. The Polar Project presents a remarkable opportunity to develop new techniques in climate change education and broadly in science education to present complicated material in a way that's very engaging so that people learn the material and so it sticks with them and so they can extend it to different parts of their lives. So we look to see what works and what works for who, how different polar products reach different audiences. Sometimes we scare people by talking about the changing climate and changing sea level. But in fact, we as a species have adapted to it time and again. And really, right now, we're just smarter and better able to image and understand that it's changing. And we should be equally smart in being able to adapt to those changes. I think one of the attractive parts of the Polar Project is that it tries to address a large spectrum of adult learners. But even more enticing to me is that it tries to use innovative tools. Tools that are pervasive in use in our society right now, including social networks. Trying to understand how these new ways to communicate can actually be used to communicate scientific knowledge and hopefully make a difference in how people behave is something that, that's really uh, attractive to me and I think is also something that we, out of academia, have to understand and have to apply. The Polar Explorer app is a really fun opportunity to engage the public with real data. So it's taking data and developing visualizations from that and then putting them into a map-based app which allows people to engage directly with the data and look at it both spatially as well as through time so they can actually touch on the data and learn temperatures, they can learn elevation, depth, so they really can dig right into the data and use it to understand the changes that are going on in the Earth system. I like to describe Greenify as Instagram with purpose, really centered on ideas of sustainability, more so than just recycling, but living well, living as part of a community. You're posed a mission, and that mission's in the form of a what-if question. And to respond to that mission, you upload a picture of you participating in an activity or doing some sort of deed. And ideally, these missions and these ideas are shared across the community and across other social networks. Another project we're working on is called EcoChain's Arctic Crisis, and it is a multiplayer card game that gives players the experience of managing part of a food web and so as part of the game you learn about predator-prey relationships and threats to arctic species and different ways that people can um, protect arctic species. We care very much about um, trying to address real-world problems and using the power of games and the power of play to deliver experiences that are uh, very powerful learning experiences. I'm working on something called Arctic Smartic, um, which is strategic management of resources in times of change. And it's going to be a board game as well as a classroom exercise. Smartic Arctic Saga is for two to four players, and you play as one of the stakeholders within the region, one of the industries that is um, exploring and utilizing the resources. And as you explore and you look to develop, you are gaining resources and trading with other players and then using those resources to develop. And when you develop, there's a negotiation process that happens, and that's the core element of the game, is you have to negotiate with other players and everyone kind of makes demands on each other. Future Coast is a way to collect stories about the future, about possibly climate changed futures. It's a playful experience that lets participants imagine 
a possible future or a future that they want to explore. One of the ways in which you play with the future is that you get to listen to it. And this is actually a voicemail that somebody in the future, in one of our possible futures, left for somebody else. Voicemails from our future are showing up. And these are voicemails that we've just overheard. And it invites participants to create their own, to imagine what voicemail they might leave. How does that reflect their own personal experience of the future? I am working on the Polar Voices Project, which is a dramatic radio series about climate change at the poles. Polar Voices is designed to integrate both scripted narrative, dramatic component, with not just factual scientific content, but in the actual voices of scientists, experts, residents of both poles. And what really strikes me as again interesting about this project is that when you can't see what's happening, you listen more carefully. REAC is reaching uh, Arctic communities facing climate change. It's important that we engage communities and stakeholders in the Arctic. And so our project is targeted to reach these audiences, whether they're elders, uh, leaders, community leaders, uh, educators, planners, and just community members. There are different villages in the interior all over. There's 40 some villages that we work in in our area. And I know many of the people in there, in those villages, and I provide the uh, names of people that might be able to help with the partnership and the different projects that they're conducting. The American Museum of Natural History has a mission to do scientific research and to disseminate those findings since its founding in 1869. So this project is part of that effort. And in particular, what we want to do is to deepen a scientific understanding of climate change, particularly in the polar regions. The museum offers a suite, a rich suite of educational programs. For this particular project, we're going to be offering both online and face-to-face -face programs at the museum focusing on climate change with a particular emphasis on the polar regions. I organized some broad surveys of what the general public knows and believes about polar regions and how they are changing. We do polls both in uh, my home state of New Hampshire and we do national 50 state polls and we also do selected regions around the country and we find that New Hampshire is a pretty good indicator of uh, the national results as well. So it provides sort of a, a laboratory to test out new ideas. I have a background in Arctic policy for the U.S. Navy, and so I apply that to understanding how education may help people through the Polar Project. I share what I know about the military and other interests in the Arctic as it applies to what Polar is trying to do with education and making sure that its games are accurate um, while also fun and educational. We're looking at the potential for games, the Polar Games, to teach systems thinking. Systems thinking is very complex. There are many definitions, but broadly one would say that systems thinking is thinking in terms of the whole rather than in terms of the parts. The Polar Hub is the official website of the Polar Partnership. It features all of the information that you would want to know about all of the projects that we're developing, as well as some of the other resources that we think are fantastic for people to use to learn more about polar climate change. So focusing on the poles allows us to really talk about climate as a system. It's something for me that is a challenge. We know what the problem is, we're starting to see what the effects are on our communities and our ecosystems, but we also have, I very deeply believe, the capability as a society to address these challenges together so that we are more prepared for and resilient to the changes that are to come. I'm passionate about understanding how our planet's changing, what's going to make it change in the future, and communicating how that change is happening. And that's one of the goals of the Polar Project is actually see if we can expand that conversation.